This painting is called Salvador Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci, and it was worth half a billion dollars when it was sold back in 2017. And then look at some of these paintings. They come with a price tag of about $100 million each. But what exactly is it about these paintings that make them so valuable? If you think the answer is artistic talent, then you're in for a surprise. Because talent doesn't really factor into the equation as much when you think about the value in today's art industry. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. How does money work in the art world? So to understand how art is valued today, we need to look at the past. How was art valued back in the old days? You see, up until a few hundred years ago, art was simply considered a craft. So back then, being an artist was the same as being a carpenter, a cook, or even a blacksmith. In those days, you couldn't just paint something and have it displayed in a gallery or have it sold off at some fancy auction. Being an artist wasn't really a concept back then, at least not like it is today, where being an artist can be considered a legit profession. Artists in the past were like any other laborers. They were hired by wealthy patrons to work on their projects as per their specifications. The value of the art back then was based on the artist's skill, the type of materials they used, and how long it took for them to create their paintings. So it was very transactional back then. I mean, some artists still work like this today, but when you think about the big expensive artwork or paintings, chances are they aren't as transactional as they were back then. This is fundamentally different from how art is valued in the modern world. Today, in many cases, if an artist is famous enough, they could actually duct tape a banana to a wall and people would try to understand what the meaning is behind the artwork and it could actually fetch a pretty hefty price. So what changed? Well, it all started when society's perception of artists started to change from simple craftsmen or laborers to innovators and great thinkers. During the Renaissance period, this shift meant that artists were being held in the same esteem as philosophers, inventors, and even writers. And with this change in perception came a change in the understanding of what made art valuable. And this was true especially in high society. At this stage, art was considered as a medium of expression. It was considered an expression because it expressed the artist's point of view, and it started to have a cultural impact. The originality of the art piece, the originality of the artist himself, the history of the artists, his background, all of that started to come into consideration when an art piece was displayed. And as this phenomenon started to become more and more widely accepted, especially in high society, the ownership of artwork started to come into play. You see, ownership from movers and shakers of industry or ownership by high cultural elites ended up signaling to the wider society how valuable art pieces should actually be perceived as. For example, take a look at this piece from 1955. It's called The Interchange by De Koning and it came with a hefty price tag of $300 million. Now, it's not the skill of the artist or the medium that made this piece so valuable. Instead, the piece actually introduced a new art technique, a new style, and this influenced a whole new art movement. Moreover, the artist in question is dead, so that means that there's a finite amount of his work available. You see, all of these factor into the value of art. There's a lot of confusion and argument about the intrinsic value of art. It's hard to pinpoint that. But the societal and commercial value of art has a lot of factors and that can move around a lot. So that's why the perceived value of art in this context can be very subjective. But there is some method to the madness. Over the years, people have started to come up with systems and processes and frameworks to help determine the value of artwork. So the modern method of art appraisal actually involves inputs from various sources, such as auction houses, gallerists, and even art consultants, and they work together to arrive at a fair estimate, which is the value of the artwork. However, that's not the full picture. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I put out a video every single week and your support would mean a lot. As I was saying, there's a lot more to this story and there's a shady side to it. You see, in the last few decades or so, a new trend started to emerge. And this actually threatens to rob art of all its authenticity. Over the last few decades, art has been being treated as a business. This means that the industry is all about how much money you can make from art. 
aesthetic sense, expression, and meaning in these kinds of situations become secondary concerns, and the primary concern becomes all about the money. And when art becomes all about money, a lot of unethical practices start to emerge. For example, there are instances that involve the artist and their dealers actually playing the role of savvy marketers instead of representing the arts. It becomes all about the hype, about the social intrigue that they can create and how much publicity that they can create about the art piece. And it's not about the intrinsic value of the art piece anymore. Some dealers actually go as far as buying the works of their artists to increase the perceived value. And then they go to the press highlighting how much these art pieces are worth, all in an attempt to jack up the price. See, this is different from the older generation of artists. The perceived value of art still drove the prices back in the day, don't get me wrong. But there wasn't a concerted effort to market the pieces or to make them appear more valuable than they were. The value of these pieces were driven by how society reacted to them or by the cultural impact that they had instead of a concerted marketing effort. Now compare that to modern times and marketing plays a pretty big role in driving the value as opposed to a socially driven conclusion. It's a very fine line and it's terribly hard to pinpoint this, which is why most folks actually get away with this practice. And when I say marketing, I don't really mean in your face billboards or TV ads or things of that nature. I'm talking about a very subtle kind of marketing where press, social figures, and scarcity are all used to drive up the perceived value of these art pieces. But the story actually gets worse. Bonafide criminals are taking full advantage of the art industry and the lack of transparency that exists in the art trade. You see, modern art actually enables criminal activity through a couple of mediums. And that includes money laundering, and the most common one is actually tax frauds. So how would that work? So let's say you're a wealthy individual and you're looking to avoid paying taxes. So here's a rough idea of how that would go down. Step one, buy a collection of an artist's work and engineer the sale of one of those pieces at an astronomically high price. The buyer is usually someone you're connected with and in on the scheme. Step two, get an official art appraiser and influenced by that recent sale of that one art piece, they're gonna now overvalue all the other remaining art pieces in your collection. So now your remaining art pieces are valued way higher than they should be. Step three, you gift those overvalued remaining art pieces to a museum or a charity, and then you reward yourself with a pretty hefty tax deduction. You'd be surprised at how often this takes place in high society. If you're still not convinced that art is used for these illegal activities, just take a look at this news from Mexico. The government in Mexico actually passed a law stating that a lot more information had to be collected about art buyers and sellers, and this made it extremely difficult to inflate the prices of low-value artwork and therefore making it very difficult to commit fraud. And no surprises here, after passing the law, the sales dipped by about 70% in the art market. Alright, so by now you should have a better idea of how art is valued and why some artwork are valued so much more than they should be. But it is interesting to see the journey that we took to get here. From art being considered a low value work such as common labor, to today seeing paintings being sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, what a fascinating ride it's been. If you enjoy these kinds of deep dive videos about topics on money and finance, consider checking out this video that I made about the history of 7-Eleven. It's a pretty interesting story and I think you'll enjoy it. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.